The human body needs nutritious food to stay healthy. For rice plants, it's just the same. They need a fertile soil to supply them with nutrients. To obtain a healthy crop, rice plants need light, water, air and a healthy soil. Soils that have a good soil structure, plenty of living organisms and organic matter generally have large nutrient reserves. They retain water better and avoid nutrients draining out of reach of the roots of your crop. Rice plants will grow very well under such conditions. But not all soils are equally healthy. And even a fertile soil can become less healthy if no proper care is taken. Soils provide nutrients to rice plants. When harvesting a rice crop, the nutrients in the stems and panicles are removed from the field and the soil therefore loses nutrients. In this video we'll have a closer look at how to maintain our soil health to produce healthy crops year after year. For this we need to learn about nutrients, soil structure and organic matter. But before doing so, let's first take a look at the development of the rice plant to understand when rice plants need what type of nutrient. We can compare the development of the rice plant with the construction of a granary. Rice plants first go through a vegetative phase, producing leaves and tillers. This period of horizontal growth is like building the foundation of the granary. Next, during the so-called vertical growth, rice plants produce panicles and start flowering. We can compare this phase with the construction of the walls and the roof of the granary. After flowering and until maturity, the rice plants fill their grains. This is like the granary being filled. Nutrients are needed at all three stages to make the foundation, to construct the walls and roof and to fill the granary. So what are these nutrients? Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are the most important nutrients for the rice plant. They're present in the soil, in organic inputs, mineral fertilizers and even in small amounts of irrigation water. Let us now take a closer look at what each of these three nutrients does to our rice crop. Nitrogen is by far the most vital nutrient. It gives the stems and leaves a healthy green color and stimulates the rice plant throughout its growth. It's important that the rice plant can take up sufficient nitrogen to produce tillers, but also to produce panicles and to fill the grains. Phosphorus helps the roots develop. If a fertilizer containing phosphorus is applied, it's best incorporated in the soil at the time of plowing or puddling. Potassium helps plants to better resist against drought, pests and diseases. It also prevents lodging and favors the filling of rice grains. Let's hear how an extension agent from the office du Niger in Mali explains these key nutrients. The N stands for nitrogen. It gives the plant abundant leaves and strengthens the chlorophyll function. The P stands for phosphorus and gives vigor to the root system. Plants will develop good roots. Nitrogen 
on va tout accaser que balotchement là c'est soumission vraiment donc soumission parce que soumission barcalaigne avec Faransoro avec tout le monde mais n'ayant pas donc potassium allez débit comme the K stands for potassium and helps to regulate the chlorophyll function it results in good fruits and healthy plants these are the three elements one can find in basil fertilizers. Nutrients can be added through organic inputs and mineral fertilizers. However, it's important to understand that organic inputs and mineral fertilizers cannot substitute for each other. In fact, they fulfill different functions. The role of organic inputs is to replenish the organic matter reserves in the soil. This is important for soil life. To protect the soil from erosion, and to improve the retention of water and nutrients. A soil with plenty of earthworms and other living creatures is rich in organic matter and nutrients. However, most organic inputs have a low nutrient content. Mineral fertilizers, on the other hand, have a high nutrient content and therefore are a direct source of plant nutrients. Mineral fertilizers contain either one of the nutrients or a combination of them. Fertilizer bags indicate which and how much nutrients they contain. White fertilizers such as urea only contain nitrogen. Colored fertilizers contain a mixture of elements whereby N stands for nitrogen, P for phosphorus and K for potassium. But be careful not all white or all colored fertilizers contain the same amount of nutrients. The numbers on the bag indicate the percentage of each nutrient. So the higher the number, the more of the nutrient it contains. Calculating the best fertilizer rate for a rice field depends on many factors and isn't easy. It especially depends on how fertile your soil is. In other words, how big the reserves in NP and K are in your soil. In most cases for lowland rice, there will not be enough N for good rice growth. But there will be enough P and K. Urea contains much more nitrogen than NPK fertilizers and is generally cheaper. Therefore, you're usually better off applying more urea than NPK fertilizers on lowland rice. For upland rice, both nitrogen and phosphorus are usually important. Let's now take a look at the solubility of different fertilizers. In the bottle on the left, we put urea. As you can see, it quickly dissolves in water. In the bottle on the right, we put NPK. This fertilizer hardly dissolves. So what does this mean? Phosphorus and potassium dissolve very little and are best applied as basal fertilizers at the time of plowing or puddling. They're retained in the soil and are gradually consumed by the rice plant. However, urea dissolves easily and the nitrogen will quickly move down the soil out of reach of the plants. Therefore, it's better to apply urea on moist soil and not in the flood water. Also, a heavy rain can wash it down the soil out of reach of the roots. The farmer in this picture who applies urea in the rain will see most of his money washed away. As urea is highly soluble, apply it only when the plant needs nitrogen most. If you apply large quantities of urea at the same time, the rice plant will not be able to absorb it all. Simply put, you'll lose most of the fertilizer. To stimulate tillering, apply urea a first time at the beginning of tillering. This is about two weeks after sowing or one week after transplanting. Apply urea a second time 
when the rice plant starts to produce panicles. This moment depends on the variety and the planting date. Good timing requires some experience. If the stems are bulging and pregnant with panicles, the application should have been done two weeks earlier. If you carefully observe your rice and give her all the food she needs, she'll develop well, produce a lot and fill your granary. At the time when panicles begin to form, new leaves appear above the rice canopy. Once we see this in our field, we automatically know the rice has started to develop panicles. Also, the color of the leaves change, even when they were nicely green before. Under good management and if very high yields are targeted, urea can be applied a third time at the beginning of flowering to boost grain filling and help fill your rice granary. So rice plants benefit from nitrogen at all three development stages. To make the foundation, to construct the walls and roof, and to fill the granary. Now that we know all about nutrients, let's have a closer look at the soil structure. As different types of soil retain nutrients differently, it will affect how you should manage your soil fertility. We can demonstrate this with a small experiment. The bottle on the left contains sand, whereas the one on the right contains clay. When we apply water with NPK, you can see that the nutrients have drained entirely through the sand, but less so through the clay. The more clay in your soil, the better it retains nutrients. Good timing of fertilizer application is particularly important for sandy soils. Adding mineral fertilizer has only a limited effect if your soil lacks organic matter, as not many nutrients will be retained. Organic inputs such as manure and composted plant materials, can add organic matter. It helps the soil to retain moisture and gives it a good structure. And most importantly, organic matter helps prevent nutrients from leaching away. Applying mineral fertilizer on fields that are not well managed doesn't make much sense. It's especially important to weed your field before you apply mineral fertilizer. Good crop husbandry and timing of weeding and fertilizer applications will save money because the rice plant will recover more nutrients and you'll have better yields. Animal manure and weeds can be incorporated in the soil to improve the organic matter content. To save labor, some farmers pile cut weeds in small mounds in the field and cover it with soil to compost. Organic compost enriches the soil a lot and thank God the differences are obvious. The heap you see here is covered with soil. Before the next season it will decompose and give a good compost. This compost will benefit the plants wherever it's applied. Those parts will produce particularly well. Some farmers plant grain legumes such as cowpea or soybeans. The nodules on their roots fix nitrogen from the air and they do this free of charge. Varieties that produce grains and plenty of leaves may be used to improve soil fertility. When these leaves and stems are incorporated into the soil, this will provide nutrients for the next rice crop. After growing beans, I notice that their roots have nodules. 
When harvesting, you remove the beans, but the leaves and roots stay behind. The roots that stay in the soil last longer than mineral fertilizers. This can be up to three years. Whereas mineral fertilizer, you have to apply every year and you have to pay for. The leaves and roots of cowpea make the soil richer. By growing these crops, it's like you actually fertilize your soil for the next one or two years to come. General recommendations on soil fertility management don't make much sense as soils, organic inputs and availability of mineral fertilizers differ from one place to the next. Explore with other farmers how your fields differ. You may want to draw a village soil fertility map and test different amounts of organic inputs and mineral fertilizer and compare results. By discussing, analyzing the situation and testing different options with your neighbors, you'll be able to find out what works best for you. So what have we learned? Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are the main nutrients for rice. The most direct source of nutrients are mineral fertilizers. Fertilizers containing phosphorus and potassium are best applied before crop establishment as basal application during land preparation. Urea only contains nitrogen and dissolves easily. Therefore, apply urea in splits when plant demand is maximal, especially at the start of tillering and at the panicle initiation stage. Good crop management and timing of weeding and fertilizer application is essential. This will ensure that the rice plants recover most of the nutrients applied. Give priority to urea when you apply mineral fertilizer on rice grown under lowland conditions. By adding organic inputs, you improve your soil structure and organic matter content and reduce the loss of nutrients. Applying mineral fertilizer does not make much sense if your soil is poor in organic matter. Some legumes fix nitrogen and this may benefit the next rice crop if sufficient legume biomass is incorporated in the soil. So remember, good soil fertility management gives a healthy crop.